Well, the rationale is that AF ablation is a commonly performed procedure around the world. And when you think about the complications of the procedure, two of the complications we worry about the most are strokes and TIAs on one hand and bleeding complications, particularly pericardial tamponade on the other hand. So this navigation of bleeding risk and stroke risk is critically important. Well, at the present time, the most sort of the best way to prevent strokes and manage bleeding complications during AF ablation is to perform the procedure on uninterrupted warfarin. And that's a well-established strategy that's used around the world, but it's very cumbersome because if someone's on a NOAC, you got to switch them to a warfarin, they show up for the procedure and their INR is too high or too low, you have to cancel the procedure, so it's a pain. So the rationale of the study was to compare dabigatran, one of the commonly used NOACs, with uninterrupted warfarin. In both arms of the study, we used uninter uninterrupted anticoagulation. So patients having AF ablation were randomized to dabigatran or warfarin four to eight weeks prior to the procedure. The procedure was performed on uninterrupted anticoagulation, and then the anticoagulation strategy was continued for eight weeks, and the major endpoint was the rate of major bleeding events. The, re the results of the study showed that performing AF ablation on uninterrupted dabigatran was associated with a significantly lower rate of major bleeding events as compared to uninterrupted warfarin. So if you look at the dabigatran arm, there were 317 patients and five patients had a major bleed or 1.6%. If you look at the warfarin arm, there were 318 patients and 22 patients had a bleeding rate event, so 6.9%. So that's an absolute reduction in bleeding rate of 5.3% and a 77% relative reduction in bleeding rate. I think the other important findings of the study is there were no strokes in either arm, there were no patients with a systemic embolism, and there was one TIA in the warfarin arm. Well, I believe the data from Recircuit is important and will, you know, supports the performance of AF ablation on uninterrupted dabigatran. I think the data is very strong, very compelling, and I think this will motivate people to switch to that strategy. Certainly in my case, you know, you know, the strategy of switching patients to warfarin is done. I'm going to use dabigatran. I'm going to give them dabigatran the, the dose the morning of the procedure. So I think it will have a big uh, impact in my practice, and I think it will have a big impact around the world. Well, I think one of the unanswered questions is, do you need to do a TEE? Every patient in this study had a TEE performed prior to the ablation procedure. And a question will be, well, if someone's on uninterrupted dabigatran, can we now skip the TEE in all patients? So that's one of the questions that has to be answered. Another question is whether this is a class effect. Do the results with dabigatran apply to the other NOAC medications, you know, the factor 10A inhibitors? So there's a whole variety of questions that remain unanswered. I think one final point is with dabigatran, you have the reversal agent, idariocizumab, which really, I think, gives me and any operator or any patient greater comfort that in the rare event you have a major bleed, you have something on the shelf that can shut down anticoagulation quickly and effectively.